So let's continue talking about graphing exponential growth and decay functions. And remember the general form, if we have some function f of x, that the exponential growth or decay function looks like a multiplied by b to the x power. Let me rewrite that b. And essentially the a value is the starting value since if you plug in 0 to this general form, then you get b to the 0 power, which is 1, and 1 times a is just a. And then we know that b is just the base. It's the number that you multiply by to go from one value to the next as you increase your x values by 1. So we can compare it to this general formula, or we can start by making a table. Both ways are valid, but you can see if you plug in 0 here, so h of 0, you do get 9 back since 2 thirds to the 0 is just 1. So that's essentially our starting value, and we'll have to use a scale of 2 here. And we also know that our base, b, is 2 thirds. And since this is a fraction, we know that we're going to be dealing with exponential decay here. So as the x values increase, the function itself will decrease. So with that in mind, let's actually just make a quick table and plot a couple points. And then from there, we can get an idea of what a graph is going to look like. So when x is 0, we already know that's going to be 9 and our function h of x. And let's plug in 1. So now we have 9 times 2 thirds, and 2 thirds of 9 is 6, or 9 divided by 3 is 3, 3 times 2 is 6, and we can keep going, but essentially from one x value to the next, let me write in this scale, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, as we increase x by 1, we're just going to be multiplying our y values by 2 thirds, since that's our base. So for number two, we're going to be multiplying this previous x value by two-thirds, or you can take your starting value and multiply it by two-thirds twice, or four-ninths. So nine multiplied by four-ninths is just four. So let's start plotting these points, and like I said, we'll have to use a scale of two for each of these y values. Excuse me, that's going to be an eight, and so on. So it goes through at 0, 9, so that's going to be right about here. And then it goes through at 1, 6, and at 2, 4. And it's just going to get smaller and smaller as you go on, since if you plug in 3, well, you'll take 4 and multiply it by 2 thirds again, which would be 8 thirds or 2.6 repeating. And we could go the other way if we want. We could plug in a negative number. So that would give us 9 times 2 thirds to the minus 1. So we'd have to flip this fraction. So that would be 9 times 3 over 2, which let me just make a bit more space. So that's 27 over 2. And 2 goes into that 13 whole times. And then you would have 1 left over. So 1 half is the same as 0.5. So if we wanted, we can also put in at negative 1 that it goes through roughly that point there. And all of these exponential functions, whether it's growth or decay, are going to have an asymptote. And since we're not like adding 2 or subtracting 5, or in other words, shifting the entire function up or down, the asymptote for all of these, unless it's shifted, is going to be for the line y is equal to 0. So this x-axis, this again is the asymptote of the function. So let me just quickly connect these points and draw in our exponential curve. And this curve will give you a rough idea of what the graph looks like. Now always when you graph these by hand you're never going to get a perfect picture since all the scales are never going to be perfect and you're not a computer. But if you work through these problems on the Khan Academy, the graphing applicator there will draw these perfectly. And for those, remember, you just need to find two different points and the curve will fill the rest in perfectly. And you can move the x or the asymptote up and down, but for all of these problems, we're not going to be shifting up or down. So the asymptote for all of these will be at y equals zero. So with that in mind, let's do one more problem. And for this problem, it is useful to compare it 
to the general formula just to get a feeling for what the function is going to look like. And after that, we'll make a table. So notice that when we plug in 0 for x, that we're going to get our a value. And in this case, we'll get 4, since 3 halves to the 0 is just 1. And our base here is the number raised to the x power, so that's going to be 3 halves. And since our base is greater than 1, we're dealing with exponential growth. So we should expect our function to move upward as the x values increase. And since we're not shifting this up or down, we're not like adding 10 on the outside or subtracting 7, we know that y equals 0, this x-axis, this will once again be our asymptote for this function. So this just gives us a general idea of what the picture should look like. And at this point, we can start making a table to see if we can come up with an accurate picture of what this graph looks like. So we just need to pick different x values and see what the function values will look like. So we know when we plug in 0 that we get 4. So let's plug in 1. So we have 4 times 3 over 2 to the first power, or just 4 times 3 halves. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2 times 3 is 6. If we plug in 2, we have 4 multiplied by 3 halves twice, so that would be 9 over 4. And the 4s cancel, and that's just 9. And just for practice, let's plot one of the negative x values. So we have 4 times 3 halves to the minus 1, and raising it to the negative 1 power flips the fraction. So you get 4 times 2 over 3. And that would be 8 over 3 when we carry out the multiplication, which is 2.6 repeating. So we can plot these points now. We know it goes through at 0, 4. And let's use a scale of 2 again for the y values. So the x values, we can keep a scale of 1. And for the y values, like I said, let's use a scale of 2 so that we can plot all of our points here. So it goes through at 0, 4. Then at 1, it's going to go through 6 for our y value. And at 2, we're going to have a y value of 9. And if we wanted to keep finding more y values, every time we increase x by 1, we're multiplying by this base of 3 halves, or 1.5. And for negative 1, we know it goes through at about 2.6, or specifically 2.6 repeating, or 2 and 2 thirds. And we know our asymptote is at y equals 0, so the graph will not cross this x-axis boundary here. So at this point, let me try and make an accurate picture of this graph. And once again, this just gives us a rough idea of what the curve looks like. But when you use the actual graphing application, you just need to plot two points and it will fill in the curve perfectly here.